Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and Horror. Today we will delve into the history and secrets of Jean de Sanstar, an elf and a vampire who has managed to preserve part of his essence from the corruption of his vampiric nature and dedicate his own life to the destruction of other creatures of the night. But first, a warning to the unwary travelers of the mist. Jean de Sunstar is a character that appears in one book and several short stories from the Dungeons and Dragons universe, so this video may contain spoilers about his past and history. Are you ready? As we awake in the hard ground of a dark cave, we notice the melancholy sound of a flute. We are safe and warm by a small fire. And when our eyes adjust to the darkness, we notice our mysterious host wearing a dark cloak. It is time to find out more about this strange undead creature that rescued us from certain death in the lands of Forlorn. Power of the Raven. Hear me, gods, hear me, powers of darkness and pain. If there is one who harmed her, I will find him. I will destroy him. Punish me, if you will, for my hands are not clean. But deny me not my revenge. Jean de Sansta is a character who first appeared on the Ravenloft campaign setting through the novel Vampire of the Mists in which he is the main character. This novel tells the story of how Jandra's fate led him from the lands of Faerun in Forgotten Realms to Barovia in Ravenloft, where he met Count Strad von Zarovich, becoming first allies and then bitter enemies. He also features in a series of short stories in the anthologies Realms of Valor, Realms of Magic and Realms of Infamy, that explore his past as a vampire in the Forgotten Realms setting. Jander Sunstar is a High Elf, or Sun Elf, who was turned into a vampire over 500 years ago. Despite his undead condition, Jander managed to preserve his honorable and kind heart, not succumb to the corruption imposed by his vampiric condition. Jander is 6 feet tall and has a pale golden skin and his hair is almost white blonde. Nowadays, he's always dressed in dark robes and cloak, and always wear gloves over his hands, which serve to hide the horrendous scar from his burns, as well as to avoid the little contact he causes to plants. He's a unique type of vampire. Despite being an elf, he does not suffer from the typical vampire curse that affects the elves not having deformed features and draining charisma from his victims. According to the Von Richten Guide to Vampires classifications, he is rated as an eminent vampire for his age and powers, and can be also classified as a Nosferatu vampire that drains his victims of constitution. Jander can be only wounded by powerful magic weapons and is capable of exerting his vampiric domination with his gaze or the mere sound of his voice. He is able to command beasts in his vicinity and change his form to take on an animal form when he so wishes. His body degenerates very quickly, but the hand he uses to carry the holy symbol of Ravenkind in his last battle against Count Strad has never completely regenerated being blackened and destroyed by heavy burns. Jander's touch is also lethal to any plant. As an admirer of nature, this affliction causes him great suffering, so he rarely take off his gloves. Despite his vampiric nature, despite his vampiric nature, Jander retains his kind and gentle soul, and has managed to maintain his personality despite his transformation into a vampire. 
is an admirer of beauty in all forms, be it through the arts or nature itself. He avoids fighting with any living creature, unless he has no choice, but there were few times when he succumbed to the fury of the vampiric beast, letting the predator within himself speak louder. But what led Jander Sunstar to such a unique condition, and imprisoned him in the demiplane of dread? Jander was born in the island of Evermeet, where he lived for many years until he became an adult. He then left the island to set off to other parts of Faerun, living as an adventurer in several kingdoms dominated mostly by humans. Despite being a faithful devotee of Latander Morning Lord, the Sun God, Jander was a skilled fighter. He joined a group of adventurers known as the Silver Six, and with them defeated the Red Dragon of the Dale. While celebrating victory in a tavern in the city formerly known as Merrydale, they discovered the city was being attacked by a group of vampires. Two of Jander's companions were killed while fighting the vampires, and he personally had to exterminate a friend who had risen as an undead blood drinker. One of his friends, Gideon, disappeared that night and could not be found. After this tragic event, the surviving members of the group broke up, and each went their own way. Some time later, however, Jander found his lost friend Gideon, who claimed to have escaped the massacre by a miracle. Gideon had been turned into a vampire and captured Jander, leading him to his master Casimar, who then turned him into a... The transformation into a vampire removed from Jander everything he loved most. He was now an abomination, an undead creature that fed on the blood of his peers. Jander could never again face the sun, which was especially painful for a devotee of La Thunder, and the touch of his hands brought death to any plant he touched. In addition to all this horror, Yonder did not have the strength to resist the commands of Kazimar, his vampire master. Kazimar was the leader and master of a band of vampires who traveled through the lands of Faerun, settling in cities and towns where they fed on their inhabitants, until their presence became unsustainable. Then, they promoted a small massacre and covered the evidence of the passage with fire, before moving on to our next destination. Janda was a slave to Casimar Huyo, and he served his master for almost a hundred years, until he finally had enough strength to confront him. In the town of Mistdale, Casimar planned a night of massacre during a festival to be held in the town's tavern. The night of terror was supposed to end with a banquet of the vampire gang, which would drain and murder all the inhabitants who attended the event. But Janda, with the help of an elf city guard and a Latanda cleric, was finally able to overcome the chains imposed by his master's will and defeat him in combat. Janda thought that he would be destroyed in sequence by the locals, but the elf city guard, who had fought side by side with him, recognized his kindness and refused to drive a stake to his heart. Janda, left alone in the night, finally free from his master beating, escaped to start looking for a cure for his vampirism. For months, he wandered, living on the blood of animals or drinking on the blood of criminals, without, however, draining them to death. His prayers were finally heard when one night he found a sacred circle in a forest near a temple to Silvanus, where he found a divine emanation of the god of nature. Recognizing the kindness in Jander's heart, the deity told Jander that he could not cure him of vampirism or allow him to walk in the sun again. But as long as we remained in the confines of the sacred circle, he would again be a mortal elf. He could never leave the circle, however, otherwise he would be an undead creature again. 
Janda, live it in the light for a few months, and made friendship with the Craigs who ran the nearby temple. However, one night he realized to horror that the temple was being attacked by bandits who were massacring the clerics and burning the building. Faced with a serious dilemma, Janda did not hesitate and left the sacred circle. He then transformed it into a wolf and destroyed the bandits that attacked the temple. Janda saved his friends' lives but lost Silvana's blessing. Again, condemned to be a vampire, he went on his journey and settled in Waterdeep. Janda lived in a small house during the day and fed on the blood of animals. At night, he frequented taverns selling handicraft sculptures. He was, however, fined by Shakira Kazar, a vampire huntress known simply as the Shark for her efficiency in destroying undead. She had been on his trail since the events of Miss Dale when she discovered that one of the vampires that had been present at the massacre had escaped into the night. When she faced Jander, he insisted that he did not feed on the blood of mortals, but Shakira was not convinced by his words. She kidnapped a mortal friend of Jander and demanded him to come to the cemetery at night, where she had set a trap for him. A confrontation was fought between them, but Jander did not intend to kill Shakira, only to escape the trap. In the top of a mausoleum, Shakira lost her balance and was holding on between life and death by falling from a great height. Janda came to offer help and extended his hand to save her, but the huntress preferred to fall to her death than to hold the hand of a vampire, and she perished. Still living in Waterdeep, Janda continued to feed on the blood of animals and only on a few occasions, on the poor tormented souls who lived in the asylum for the mentally insane. His asylum was where he found Anna, a young woman, cursed never to age and driven by madness, practically mute, but with whom Janda fell deeply in love. He would visit and keep company to Anna every night, and try to understand what had caused the poor soul to have her spirit and mind so devastated. All Janda discovered about the poor girl condition was that her suffering had a supernatural origin and had something to do with a place called Barovia, a location unknown to Janda. After many years caring for his beloved Anna, a harsh winter brought on her a serious illness, and Janda, in desperation, tried to turn his beloved into a vampire. Anna rejected Jander's offer and in revulsion died in his arms. In fury, Jander lost control of his inner beast and murdered all people of the sanatorium. When he regained consciousness, he swore to the gods to take revenge on whom had caused Anna so much suffering and pain. The dark powers heard his oaths, and the mist descended upon Waterdeep and enveloped Janda, transporting him to the land of the mists. Janda arrived in the domain of Barovia in the year 475, near the village of Barovia, where he met a Vistani named Petya. Petya was having a love affair with Anastasia Petrovich the doctor of the city's burgomaster, and Janda helped him escape the burgomaster's fury, who intended to execute him. In return for helping him with his problems, Petya took Janda to Tser camp, where Janda found out more about the lands of Barovia and had his fortune read by a Taroka reading. Madame Eva, however, recognized his vampiric nature and expelled him from the Vistani camp. Janda was plagued by nightmares, where Anna implored him to avenge her madness and despair. Meanwhile, 
Madame Eva informed Count Strahd of the presence of another vampire in his lands, and the Count decided to invite Jander to his castle. After receiving Count Strahd's invitation, Jander consented and proceeded to Castle Ravenloft. At the castle, Jander and Strahd formed a tenuous alliance. Strahd was a powerful vampire, but he was just over a hundred years old, and Jander would have much to teach him about his vampiric natures and powers. On the other hand, Jander was a stranger in Barovia, where he found he could no longer feed on the blood of animals. Strahd offered him a safe haven in his castle, as well as access to his library to research his goals, and found who or what caused Anna madness. Unable to maintain his animal blood diet, Jander reluctantly joined Strahd and his vampiric minions in his night hunts. He tried not to kill his victims, but Strahd and his vampiric servants were not so careful, making it clear that this was the natural behavior of a superior predator. On one of these hunting nights, they found a camp of Faerun travelers, recently lost in the mists and trapped in Barovia, and the vampires killed almost everyone in their bloodlusts. Horrified, Jandad asked to Strahd to spare a young boy, Martin Pelka, and Strahd yielded to his request. This young man interpreted Jandra's intervention as the divine presence of the god Latanda Morning Lord, and would become the cleric who would spread the faith in Latanda through Barovia in the following years. For almost 25 years, Jander remained with Strahd in his castle. Despite their conflicting natures, Jander developed a certain esteem for Strahd, in whom he still saw some remnants of his lost nobility. Jander spent most of his time tending to a small garden in the abandoned castle cathedral, and searching in Strahd's library for a clue linking Anna's fate to Barovia. In the year of 500 of the Barovian calendar, Jander finally discovered the truth when he found the Tomb of Strahd, a diary of the Count. He discovered that Anna was actually a fragment of the dormant soul of Tatiana Fedorovna, a woman who was destined to marry Strahd's brother, Sergei von Zarovich. The book revealed Strahd's sinister pact to become a vampire, the murder of Sergei von Zarovich, and Tatiana's madness and suicide, jumping from the castle into the abyss. When he finally discovered that he was staying as guest at the castle of his sworn enemy, Jander began to plot his revenge against Count Strahd. Jander searched for allies and was joined by Sasha, the son of the forbidden Romans of Petya and Anastasia, the couple he had helped as soon as he arrived in Barovia, and lastly, a young man who had been saved from Strahd's vampiric servants. Together, they raided Castle Ravenloft in search for the holy symbol of Ravenkind. They discovered the artifact, along with Sergei von Zarovich's restless spirit and body, and then set out to confront Count Strad von Zarovich. Count Strad cornered Jander and his allies, and after an intense fight, only Count Strad remained to face the trio. With his allies severely wounded, Jander used the holy symbol of Ravenkind, which shone bright like sunlight in his hands. Strahd was almost destroyed and only escaped final destruction thanks to one of his spells. Although victorious, they knew that this victory would not be complete and that Strahd would eventually recover from his wounds and return to the castle. Jander was wounded, with his hand that was holding the holy symbol completely burned. 
and he feared to have become only a pawn of the dark powers. He then asked his companions to help him see the sunlight one last time and finally end his unholy existence. However, the dark powers will not allow Jander to sacrifice himself and the mists enveloped him, preventing the sunlight from burning him completely. For nearly two centuries, his body remained in torpor, slowly regenerating, until finally he emerged into the domain of form. Janda currently devotes his nights to hunting and destroying the creatures of the night and evil forces of Ravenloft. Although he still seeks a way to take revenge against Strad, Janda hunts other evil monsters in a true crusade and war against the dark powers themselves. When he is not on his hunt, Janda dedicates his time to playing flute and appreciation of beauty as a way of trying to keep in touch with his elven and kind essence. After the end of 3rd edition, Janda Sunstar would once again feature in an official Dungeons and Dragons product in the adventure Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus. In this adventure, heroes can find Jander Sunstar in Avernus, the first layer of hell, impaled on an iron tree. The book revealed that Jander, after devoting himself to hunting and destroying vampires and other creatures of the night, joined the Celestial Zaria in a crusade against the Nine Hells of Bator in an attempt to purify his soul. Jander, panicked after reaching hell, and regressed through the portal with other cowards, deserting his comrades and sealing the portal through which they passed, living in shame until the day that he attempted once more suicide by staring at the sun. He asked the gods for forgiveness and sought final death but he discovered that he did not die and had been condemned to Avernus, the first circle of hell. In the adventure, the heroes have the option of freeing him, and then he thanks the heroes for the gift of final death and crumbles into dust. Honestly, with all due respect to the Wizard of the Coast creative team, I find Jander Sunstar's appearance in Descent to Avernus a big waste. The book mentioned nothing of his passage to Ravenloft or how he escaped the lands of the mists, and ignores completely the character's arc, turning the redeemed vampire into a traitor and damning him to hell. In my opinion, Jander Sunstar should have been used in the Curse of Strahd adventure as a possible ally for the heroes. In addition to a rich story and past with Count Strahd that will enhance the lore of the campaign, he could play a similar role to Alucard in the Netflix Castlevania animation, and would still be in Ravenloft, his main setting, and not wasted in a simple cameo in Descent to Avernus. The role given to Jean de Sunstar in Descent to Avernus is not even relevant to the plot. It's nothing but a gratuitous cameo, and it makes canon the sad fate of the character, one that is inconsistent with his background and importance in the Ravenloft campaign setting. In my own campaign, Jean de Sunstar plays a big role as an ally of the heroes in the fight against Count Strahd, playing a crucial role in the final battle against the Count. At least for my campaign, the Dark Powers will never release the tragic vampire hero from their grasp so easily. After some time in the company of our undead host, we recover from our wounds and exhaustion and are ready to travel once more. Jander share with us the knowledge and secrets about his kind and help us get on with our journey. Confident and prepared, we bid farewell to this unexpected ally as we continued our journey to the lands of the mists, abandoning his cave and the lands of Forlorn behind. Do you still intend to proceed with us 
along unknown and dangerous paths. Then subscribe to this channel, enable notifications, and we'll soon unlock new secrets and knowledge about the domains of dread and the horrors that inhabit it.